Howdy, and welcome to part two of How to Be a Bird Dog. If you missed part one of How to Be a Bird Dog, you might want to scroll down a little bit first and watch part one, or go over there and click on How to Be a Bird Dog, part one. you watch that. Then you'll join us here at part two. I'm Nick Safoni, your host at www.rei-tv.com, and we're glad to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. What we're talking about today is how to find deals. In part one of How to Be a Bird Dog, we talked about how to find a good investor, how to make sure he's the type of person you, you work well with. We talked about the, uh, the old fear of not getting paid. We talked about different things like that. Today we're talking about how to find deals. Now first off, as a new bird dog looking for deals, one of the first things you want to decide is what are your goals? What's your level of participation going to be? Are you doing this full time for now because you want to learn as much about the business as you can in a short period of time and then step up, step up and start doing your own deals or is it more of a part-time thing where you're you know you have another job you don't plan on doing this as a career but you need to make a little bit of extra money so you're spending a couple hours a week here and there doing the bird dog stuff um, or are you looking more for do you have another job that, that you're out and about and you're in neighborhoods. You know, if you're if you're a postman or you deliver pizzas or you're driving a truck or any business that takes you through neighborhoods, I highly suggest you become a bird dog for some investor because you're there. You're there every day as it is. You're driving through neighborhoods. You're seeing old junkers. You're seeing houses going down. You're seeing signs going up and down. So it might be a good idea to get in touch with a good investor and just as you're driving through the neighborhoods when you see something that that might work write down the number one of the things that you know us investors find bird dogs for is to help us find deals that we couldn't find normally we don't really want bird dogs you know opening up newspapers and finding houses for sale we don't really want bird dogs uh, writing down you know phone numbers going on the MLS and writing down you know going to Caldwell Bankers website and writing down houses for sale. Bird dogs are used to find houses that other investors can't find. So keep that in mind. That's what's going to make you a good bird dog. Find the things that other bird dogs can't bring to to their investors. Um, <clears throat> time for a little BS. This is my bird dog site, www.birddogcash.com. That's www.birddogcash. Dot com. That's where we find our bird dogs. If you're an experienced investor looking for bird dogs, you might want to check out that site just to kind of see how we do it and get some good ideas. Um, in any case, first off, looking for deals is a good bird dog. You want everyone that you know to know that you deal with real estate. You want people to know, oh, that's that real estate guy. So tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell the people that you work with, tell the people at church, tell people that you play sports teams with. Whatever it is, you want people to know that you're into real estate, that you're looking for houses. I buy houses, those three magic words that you see all the time on signs and in newspapers and on websites and on billboards. <clears throat> you want word to get out that you're the house guy, that you buy houses. Now just because you don't personally buy them, when a guy's selling a house, he doesn't care if you buy it or if your Uncle Joe buys it. All he cares is that somebody buys it, and you're the one that's going to get the credit for it. So make sure people in your circles of influence know that you do this, that you're a real estate investor. Are you a real estate investor as a bird dog? Of course you are. You're earning money in the real estate business. It doesn't matter what level you're doing it at. You're still a real estate investor. <clears throat> so make sure everybody that you know knows what you know and what you do, that you're, a, that you're dealing with real estate. You're that house guy. Um... Other bird dogs drive for dollars. That's one of the first things that you'll learn if you're learning wholesaling, bird dogging, anything in this industry. You learn how to drive for dollars. Now, what driving for dollars is, is first you decide if you're going to work a farm area. A lot of bird dogs and investors work a farm area. So you want to talk to the investor that you're getting leads for and ask them, where are you looking for deals? Because it's a waste of your time if you're working with an investor that only buys things like in the lower lower areas, lower priced areas of town, if you're driving around through the rich gated subdivisions, it's not going to do any good. So communicate with the investor you work for and see what he's looking for. Then you can drive for dollars. And what that is, is you pick your neighborhood and you just go up and down the streets. Up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. And you take a pad and paper with you and you write down addresses of houses. Now, you should have already had the conversation. We discussed this in Bird Dog Training Part 1. You should already have a good idea of what your investor is looking for, what kind of houses he's looking for, what price range, what condition. Some investors are looking for vacant, pretty houses. Some investors are looking for 
vacant shacks, you know, so make sure you've communicated and you know what your investor is looking for, that you drive through the neighborhood looking for those. And here's what I highly suggest. When you find a deal, when you're driving for dollars that suits what your what your uh, the investor you're working with might want, don't just write down the address. Write down the address, then hop out of your car and go to the neighbor on that side of the house and go to the neighbor on that side of the house and ask him, do you know anything about the house next door? Can you give me the information about where the person moved? You know, and tell them what you're doing. I buy houses. I'm an investor. I see the house is vacant. I might be interested in making an offer. I see the weeds are, a lot, are nine feet tall. Maybe I can help out your ex-neighbor. Now, sometimes they're going to say, oh, yeah, sure. Here's their phone number. And sometimes they're not going to know. And sometimes they're going to know, but they're going to be a little leery about giving it out. Giving it out. So if you sense that for some reason they might know something, but they don't really want to tell you, just give them your information and tell them, could you please, if you happen to see the guy that lives next door or used to live next door, can you please give him my information because I might want to buy the house. And you, might, and you might get through that way. Now, if none of the neighbors have any clue who lived in that house or they won't give it to you and you're getting absolutely nowhere, when you get back to your house or your office, send a letter. Just handwrite a simple little letter. Hi, my name is Joe, if your name is Joe. And I'm interested, I buy houses in the neighborhood that this property is at, and I might be interested in buying your house. Here's my phone number, here's my contact information. If you'd like to sell that house, please give me a call. And just send it. Now granted, we know the house is vacant, we know nobody lives there. But there's a good chance that it's going to be forwarded by the U.S. Postal Service, that it's going to be forwarded to the right guy, and he'll get the information and call you back. The worst shape the house is in, and the harder it is, not really the worst shape, but the harder it is to find that seller, the more chances are you're going to bring your investor a good deal. Because a lot of investors, you know, if, if the phone number isn't written on the front door, they blow it off. So if the harder you've got to work to find the contact information for the owner of that house, the better chances are that you or your investor is the only person that's even contacted them. And the more likely, A, that you're going to get a deal, and B, you're going to get a better deal. Because in a lot of cases, these houses are overgrown with weeds or there's problems with them and these people feel they're never going to sell it. Or nowadays, with all the foreclosures going on, a lot of cases, the guy's just going to let it go. He figures, well, I'll just let the bank take it back. But they'd be happy to have you come in and take it off their hands. So another thing you can do is get some business cards made. Go to www.vistaprint.com, www.v-i-s-t-a-p-r-i-n-t, vistaprint.com, and you can get some nice free business cards, and you just fill out the form online, and they, they're nice cards, and they give them free because they want you to buy more. So order some business cards from Vistaprint, and put, I buy houses. Put your name, put your phone number. Yes, you do buy houses. You're a real estate investor now, so start handing those cards out. You might also want to make some flyers. Get some flyers made, you know, I buy houses, put the flyers on, um, on windshield wipers and cars or hang them on the vacant houses or send the flyers out, hire some kid to go through subdivisions, hand them out, uh, go to grocery stores, hang the flyers up in grocery stores saying, you know, I buy houses, give your contact information. It's old fashioned, but it works. Now, if you want to get a little technical, this is also free. You can go to Craigslist. And if you don't know what Craigslist is, I imagine you've been living under a rock or something. This is my daughter's future husband, by the way. It's a long story. But in any case, if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what Craigslist is, uh, it's a website where you can advertise to sell or buy anything. You could also go to Kijiji.com, K-I-J-I-J-I.com, or Backpage.com, www.backpage.com. These are all sites where you can you go to the real estate services and you type in there, Hi, I'm buying houses. And use some fancy, use some fancy pants headline. The headline is what's going to catch their attention. Like, everybody else is selling, we're buying. Or other investors talk big but don't perform, we perform. And then put your little ad in there. Write your ad. We buy houses, any area, any condition. Or make sure you know what your investors want. Put your phone number in there. If your investor has a website, send them to your investor's website, and you can pick up business that way. Now, those are all free. Driving for dollars is free. Business cards are free. Hanging flyers is free. Brochures is free. Uh, Craigslist is free. There's also things you could pay to do. I'm sure you've driven around and you've seen signs around, like our BS, Bandit Signs, that say, uh, we buy houses. Why do you drive through so many cities across the country and see those signs? Because they work. 
They're cheap. They're about a buck fifty each. It costs another buck or so for the stand. Get some. Drive around. Hang them up. Put them on. Put them on posts. Put them on street corners. We buy houses is all it has to say, plus your phone number. You don't have to get fancy. The simple three magic words work. We buy houses and your phone number. Make sure you check what the ordinance is. <laughs> Disclaimer bell. If you get a $50 ticket from the police department in your city, it's not my fault. I'm telling you now. Check and see if it's legal where you live first. Hello. Sometimes they'll give you a ticket for putting them up. Uh, a lot of investors, I'm not going to say this, but a lot of investors, uh, Put them up Friday night and take them down Sunday night because the guys, the, the goinkers that rip them down and write tickets only work during the week. So you might want to try that. But make sure you know the ordinances before you go ahead and do it. Um, but the signs work. You can put ads in the newspaper. There's some really cheap newspapers, penny savers, learner news. There's little cheap newspapers that'll charge you like eight bucks a week or something. Put a little ad in there. We buy houses. Put your phone number. You can get fancier, but again, simple things always work in this business. Sometimes people overthink. You can get your own website that buys houses and sells houses. You can go to, if you go to www.investorpro, one word, www.investorpro.com slash bonus. Don't forget the slash bonus. You get 50 bucks off an investor website. Um, it's a deal that I set up with the guy when I first started to work with them. It's where my websites come from, uh, and they'll knock 50 bucks off when you buy it. So www.investorpro.com slash website. Or you can get websites for free. You get some neighborhood kid to make you a website. Any seventh grader knows how to do it these days. So that's not a bad thing. You can also do mailings. You know, If you want to do a mailing looking to buy houses, talk with the investor you work for. He should be able to help you with a mailing and send the mailing out. Send it where he wants you to send it, you know, send it where he's buying. Send, you know, write it the way he wants it written. Or you can use postcards. Well, those cost a little bit of money. But I tell you what, driving for dollars, business cards. And when I say get business cards, leave them everywhere. When you're at the gas station, stick them in the corner of the pump when you leave. When you leave the restaurant and you leave a tip, leave it with the tip. Um, when, you know, wherever, you know, just leave them around so people get to see them. But, you know, driving for dollars, business cards, flyers here and there, and more importantly than anything, word of mouth, talking, letting everybody know that you're the guy that buys the houses is going to get you some get you some leads and get you some deals for you and your investor. Um, like I talked before, investors don't want the same leads that everybody else has got. So, you know, again, don't go, don't go to some realtor and say, give me a list of all your houses for sale. Because they're probably not deals, and everybody else has already got access to it. The better you are at finding the little hidden deals that nobody else finds, the more money you're going to make from your investor. And I'll tell you a secret. You start getting them some deals that you're making money on, you could ask for more money. And they'll happily give it to you if you're bringing them what's really deals. Okay? So... Thanks for watching. we got some good stuff coming up. We're, we're just weeks now from the grand opening. We're going to be sending out stuff. We're going to be sending out CDs and DVDs and giving you access to a lot more free stuff. We're going to start our live shows. I hear a rumor that I'm going to start doing some mentor, some private mentoring. And I hear another rumor that we're going to start putting together mastermind groups where you can get together on a monthly basis with 20 small groups, 20, 22, 24 other investors get to know each other, share secrets. Those are just rumors right now about me mentoring in the investor groups, but it's something I heard. So enjoy the business. Go make an offer.